Michigan's Rock Station. Q106. Mark Thompson, I'm Terry Stevens from Q106. Looking forward to hanging with you and everybody else at Capital City Comic Con, man. July 12th through yeah. 14th. It's going to be a great time, man. So, <clears throat> I, 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 you know, I think I undersold you. You are the award-winning Mark Thompson. Like, dude, yeah. I was crawling through your IMDb, and, like, you are you are lauded, my guy. <laughs> like, oh, I guess so. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, so, for people who are like, you know what I would like to do? I would like to just talk for a living. People hit me up like, how'd you get on the radio? I'm like, I don't know. just showed up one day, and they didn't ask me to leave for once. So, how did you get your start in voiceover work, man? So, I went to uh, college for acting, and then my sophomore year, I um, just saw a posting on a cork board. So this is like the olden days before the internet. <laughs> Analog internet. Yeah. Like, yeah. You just called in. Uh, it said like audition and leave a, a voice on an answering machine. So I literally called a random number and just left a goofy voice on an answering machine. And that interested them enough to call me in for a callback. And... Um, one thing kind of led to another. And basically I got cast on a show called Daria. It was on MTV and it was a spinoff of this other show called Beavis and Butthead. And that was kind of off to the races. Like that was my first ever job. And then after that, um, one thing kind of just led to another. And I, before I know it, I've been kind of doing voiceover for 20 years. So it's, it's, it's really wild. So, so let's take it back to that day. Now, this casting call, did it ask for a specific type of character voice or did you have carte blanche to, uh, to do some, to, to go wild with it? <laughs> so, um, they were actually auditioning for a show about vampires. And, uh, so it wasn't even Daria they were casting for. And they didn't give you a lot of direction. It was kind of carte blanche. So I just, I think I was like, hello, I'd like to be on your cartoon and just did like an <laughs> Igor thing. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, like that piqued their interest. And then that show ended up not going into production, but they remembered me from the audition and then had me read for some of the stuff on Daria. So yeah, the, the kids weren't cool. ready for the twilights yet. It just wasn't the time. Yeah, I guess so. not yet. <laughs> Way ahead of their time. Well, man, well, <laughs> since, since that time, I mean, again, you have, you have stacked some trophies. I'm assuming you've just built a wing onto wherever you live to store these things at this point. So, uh, one of the, one of the more, one of the interesting bits that you won an award for was William Shakespeare's star Wars. You, uh, you, you did oh, the audio book yeah. version of that. So, well, I, I'm not familiar with this particular property here. Uh, so, so how did how did what was it like doing a read for the intersection of the Bard and the George Lucas verse? It was really weird. <laughs> um, like I'm much more of a Star Wars fan than I am a Shakespeare fan. <laughs> so at first, I was a little intimidated by it because you know even in school. It, it took me forever to understand what these people were saying or, you know, what, what Shakespeare was writing. So, but in an odd way, um, Ian Desher was the author and he did such a great job of marrying those two things. Um, he took some like obviously well-known scenes from star Wars and kind of knew um, some of the similar concepts or kind of the similar emotional dynamics from famous scenes from like Hamlet or Henry V or different things like that. And in a weird way, after doing that project, I felt like I understood some of the Shakespeare plays better because I had such a deep knowledge of Star Wars and as a huge Star Wars fan that I was like, oh, that's what, you know, Henry's doing in that moment. Or, oh, that's what, you know, because I knew what Han and Leia were saying. It's like, that's what Romeo and Juliet are meaning when they, you know, so it was really kind of a cool uh, set of projects to work on. They they did it for um, the original trilogy films. They did it for all the films, but we got to do audio books for the original trilogy. I think the prequels, I can't remember now. So, um, but it was, it was really fun to do. And in a weird way, it was very educational and kind of helped me understand Shakespeare better. I was going to say, how often do you come away from a voiceover gig enriched? <laughs> as a person, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was really cool that's rad man very uh, the the fun thing about shakespeare is the more you learn about it the more you learn it's just a bunch of filthy filthy jokes like just yeah. oh, it just goes deep man i mean him and chaucer i just perv perv city yes and i'm super here yeah, for it 
<laughs> now, now, Mark, one of your most well-known roles is uh, in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, reboot of that franchise in the early 2Ks. Uh, you voiced Casey Jones, among other roles. Casey man. Jones, that's right. Bashing in purple dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So were you a big TMNT fan uh, as a kid? Yeah. No, that that was a huge deal for me. Um, like, you know, getting Dario was fun because you were on TV and, and it was exciting to do that. But Turtles was the first ever property I got to work on where I was a fan of it growing up. So um, I really wanted that gig and I was super excited and nervous to audition for it. And when I got it, it was just like such a big deal for me. And, you know, uh, I, I was just, you know, walking down the street and kind of go, thank you, God, you know, like just right. really excited. <laughs> so uh, it was, it was super fun. And it's, it's, it was such a great, project to work on because it was um uh i don't know how much your listeners know about the difference between dubbing and prelay but prelay uh means that they animate to what you record so and 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 as a result we we did group records so uh greg abbey uh who's also going to be at cap city uh and i got to record scenes together and we got to like play off of each other in the booth and that's you know very rare because most of the time I'm I'm dubbing things from other languages into English and it's just you in a padded room you know so uh, the fact that you get to interact with other actors and kind of improv a little bit and vibe off of each other and then just the you know that it was this like nostalgic like property that I grew up with that that I was a fan of it just meant so much to me and I, I felt super excited to get to do it i've talked to so many people from that reboot of the franchise and they have all echoed what you have said the being in the room together when you're doing yeah. the lines and when you watch the show when you watch that reboot man like i know fine you got nostalgia for the old one watch the reboot because the energy there's a very very noticeable difference in the energy and the voiceovers in that oh, reboot. Wow. It's cool to hear you say that, yeah. Because I, I, we certainly felt it performing it, but it's it's nice to know that it translates when you when you watch it. So that's really cool, yeah. Now, one of the, another note that I saw you also voiced, and I, I got to know how you do this because, like, I talk for a living. I, I I do my best to maintain the pipes. I got the throat coat tea with the honey and the lemon. <laughs> I quit smoking years ago. You know, I try not to yell too much although you know I, I, if i were better at video games i probably wouldn't yell so damn much yeah. how how was it taking on the voice of cobra freaking commander in gi joe because <laughs> i listened to I, I i went and i watched a couple episodes i'm like that, that that sounds painful yeah yeah well that was another one like that, that was um i was an even bigger gi joe fan than i was a turtles fan so that that was another huge you know dream come true moment um he was very difficult and, uh, like he uh he's very raspy and stuff and you'll learn like that was um part of it was my ear and listening to him every morning from <laughs> ages you know 10 to like 13 uh or whatever it was whatever year that that, that was on um you know, I, so part of it was just, it was kind of ingrained in me at a very young age, but then part of it is they teach you like all kinds of, you know, accurate in your instrument and, you know, how you should achieve these sounds and stuff in acting school. So, so some of it was a combination of that, but it's, uh, um, it, yeah, I did, the sessions couldn't go too long for him. Like, you know, like it, he was, luckily he was in and out and got to get his plans foiled and then i could rest for a while <laughs> right so. right at, at that point you're you're putting in the you're putting the sort of work that like death metal vocalists do you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> right? like, it, cobra commander voice actors death metal vocalists y'all y'all have iron pipes dude that's the only thing i can figure only oh wow you might be qualified to fill in for the, thy art is murder at some point uh, 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 now that, that you've done this uh, another really I mean, it's sense you said that <laughs> <laughs> love it well you know if the, if the replacement for that cj dork doesn't work out there you go they call mark thompson there you go thy artist cobra commander here we go i'm here for it <laughs> so another really rad uh project that you voiced um you did the uh english version of one of the coolest animes i've seen in a hot minute Pluto, man. What was your reaction when you got a hold of that script? So I wish I had a better story for this. Like, um, I, that, that was one of the jobs where I kind of got called in to do like a day of work on. And so you typically don't get the full script when you watch it. And I've heard people really 
have enjoyed it. And, you know, I, I could tell like the animation looked really awesome. And, and the Mike center Nicholas, uh, who played uh, uh, Leonardo in Ninja Turtles directed that actually. Oh, right. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, so he's he's a great director, and 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 definitely, um, I could tell the quality of the work was really great. But I I don't know much about the whole story. I didn't get to read the whole script, and I only kind of saw the scenes that I was dubbing <laughs> at the time. So I I, uh, I need to check it out though, because you're like the third person that's uh, brought it up to me, and and uh, I, I could tell from the scenes I was watching it was going to be cool, but I just haven't watched the whole thing yet. Oh, so. dude, it's rad. It's it is worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Quick before Netflix pulls it down, or the only <laughs> thing you'll you'll be able to find is Pluto three or whatever next yeah, yeah, yeah. very good about seeing the sequel to the thing you really wanted to watch it's fantastic like that so uh, mark what is your favorite part of doing these cons and showing up to these conventions man it's gotta be meeting all the fans like i just uh it's incredibly humbling because you get to hear people say all these really nice things about you and the and the and the work that you did and um but it's it's um it's i kind of use it as fuel for future work too. Cause I just, you know, um, somebody just sent me an email today that they're going through a really intense health crisis oh my. and, um, like they, they don't have a lot of energy for stuff, but they listen to some of the star Wars audiobooks that I've recorded and that helped get them through a really dark time. And so to know that, you know, in some small way, you're a part of something that maybe brings a little bit of light to people's life or, or, or a little bit of joy. And it, it, uh, it's it's humbling and inspiring and uh and i i love hearing those stories and 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 then just you know i'm very much a, a geek myself and i i'm a big star wars and star trek fan so i i find myself like looking at the vendors tables and probably coming <laughs> home with a few things i i i shouldn't uh spend money on but i end up doing anyway so like i i think they're a blast i was going to conventions uh, as a fan long before i was going uh as a guest so um it's a it's it's I, I love them. I, I think they're a blast. Very cool. And have you visited our fair city of Lansing before or is this your first I have time? Not. I have not. Do you have any suggestions of things I need to check out? Oh, or? my gosh. You're only here for three days and there is so much. I mean, look, like the downtown area where you're going to be uh, down at the Lansing Center. Take a walk around there. The Capitol is beautiful. There's so much. If okay. you're if you're an architecture, look, you're into geeky stuff. If you geek out about architecture, there's really rad stuff there. Uh, okay. let's see there's the lansing shuffle where they're doing a lot of the after parties and stuff that's a pretty dope venue um oh. uh, there oh and if you uh, now we, we i mentioned thy art is murder and you're like oh yeah I, I, okay you're, if you're down for some heavy stuff I, i'm not making this up power man 5000 is actually playing at a venue a very short a pretty short walk away from where the capital city comic-con they are they are they are playing sunday night so if you're looking to throw okay. down with some electro metal with Spider One and Posse, yeah, Gray Wall Hall at two two four. That's a dope venue, dude. So lots of rad stuff, but you you need a you, you got to take up residence here to see absolutely all of it. There's, okay, there's a lot of rad stuff to check out in that area. Power Man Five Thousand. Power Man Five Thousand. Yes, their uh, okay. big single was When Worlds Collide uh, back in the okay. '90s, and it's uh, actually Rob Zombie's little brother. He's the uh, Oh yeah, he's elite, dude. It's, it's they're a dope band. I've seen them live a couple of times. They will wear your ass out. It is cardio city, okay. dude. <laughs> my, my both my boys are more into that style of music. Um, okay. but maybe I'll twist their arm to come if that's something that uh that I'll, I'll, I'll run it by them. But thank you. That, that dude, sounds awesome. Hell yeah. yeah, dude. It's a great venue. A great way to cap off the weekend. It's a sci-fi metal band. What better way to cap off a sci-fi weekend? You know? Oh, that sounds awesome. Right? Right? <laughs> and truly, I mean, like the routing just couldn't have worked better for that one, man. So, uh, Mark, before I turn you loose, dude, what is next for Mark Thompson? What are the next big projects you have coming up? Um, I am about to record another Star Wars book that I'm actually probably not allowed to say what it is but it's, it's going to be very cool uh for for people that are into it um it's the one where then, it's the one where they revealed darth jar jar is actually a thing he was a sith <laughs> the whole time they tried to hide it it's okay i you won't get you in trouble <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. um that's probably the next big big thing there's like um there's a video game I've been doing some stuff for. I think it's called Pathfinder or something like that. So that's coming out soon. 
There's a great show called Hero Inside that's airing in Europe, but they haven't found distribution in the U.S. yet. But uh, um, so yeah, a l- bunch of little things here and there. So okay, uh, I have to ask: Is Pathfinder based on the RPG by any chance? I think it might be. Yeah. Ooh, so okay. All right. All right. People who are a fan of the, pe- people who are fans of the D and D three point five system, they're going to be very excited about that. Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, Absolutely, cool. yeah. dude. <laughs> and, and you know. If you know a thing or two about VPNs, there are ways to watch Hero Inside, matey. There's a way to find, oh, okay, yeah. there's a way to find a copy that fell off the back of the internet somewhere. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, the award-winning Mark Thompson, thank you so much for joining us today, man. We really appreciate you taking the time, and we're looking forward to hanging with you and everybody else at Capital City Comic Con, July 12th through 14th at the Lansing Center. Mark, you have a good one, buddy. We're looking forward to meeting you in person. Thank you. Me too. Michigan's Rock Station. Q106.